my translator, Philippe, who has uh, translated all of my books over the last 20 years or so. <laughs> and so if you have questions that you would like to ask, uh, you can ask them in French, and he'll tell me what you said. <laughs> I have one question yeah. very important. Oh, yes. Uh, Est-ce que les DVD vont sortir en France? Oh, uh -huh. uh, they will be available in France or in Oh, uh-huh. They will be available in England. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, to get them in French. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Alors, moi, j'avais une question complètement familière avant de commencer les questions sérieuses qu'on a toutes. Mm -hmm. Est-ce que Sam est aussi sexy en vrai qu'à la télé My husband was reading one of my conversations on Twitter with him, and he said, you talk to him like you're your little brother. No, he's uh, got a good sense of humor, a very nice, nice man. <laughs> La sortie de la série, elle a pu découvrir le tome 1 peut-être d'une manière un peu plus différente. Est-ce que après coup, avec la réalisation de, de, du tome 1 en série, est-ce qu'elle s'est dit que peut-être, euh, avec du recul, elle aurait pu changer la suite de l'intrigue, revenir sur certaines choses, ou autant regretter Yeah, after having seen the series, I had to maybe re revisit the first uh, the first volume. And did did you feel like you'd like to change change it now, or maybe you would have written differently? No, no, no. I did it uh, the best that I could when I wrote it, so yeah, I can't do any better. How was it to work even for the first time with? Uh, with the television yeah. people. It was uh, very good. <coughs> we were very lucky to have the people that we have. It could easily be horrible, <laughs> but uh, Ron is a, a very good uh, artist himself. He has great respect for the work, and he says to the fans, uh, my job is to not screw up my wife's favorite book. <laughs> 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 so, no, they, uh, I'm a consultant on the show, so you know I have no power, but they do ask my opinion. They send me the scripts. I've seen the first two scripts for season two now, ah. and they're good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they also show me the daily footage, you know, the, the shots that they take every day. Uh, they, they don't send me what they call the closed set ones. These are the ones where people are naked. And you don't see this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have seen the ones where they're not naked, mm -hmm. and uh, the way that it works is even if they do everything exactly right, they do it over and over and over and over and over. And I can see how if you were naked and having to do this over and over with the knowledge that uh, you know uh, 40 people were watching you, this would be uncomfortable. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. and ils ont eu beaucoup de chance que l'équipe avec l'équipe qui fait la, la, la série parce que d'abord ils ont beaucoup de respect pour, pour l'œuvre originale et que le réalisateur a dit de toute façon je ne peux pas me permettre de mal faire l'adaptation du, du livre préféré de ma femme <rire> et qu'elle est, elle est les consultantes sur le, sur le tournage c'est-à-dire qu'elle elle a, on a consulte, elle donne des conseils mais elle n'intervient pas du tout dans, dans l'histoire et qu'elle reçoit régulièrement les, les rushs et euh, sauf ceux où les gens euh, sont nus et puis après j'ai un petit je pense que ça résume euh, <rire> Après, elle euh, reçoit les vaches, mais pas, mais pas la partie où ils sont tout nus, parce que c'est inconfortable pour les acteurs d'être vus 40 fois. Euh, voilà. Ouais. Pas pour nous, hein. Has it happened that you watch one of the rushes they sent to you and you find that it's not entirely 
how you imagined it or how it should be, it's not tr truthful to the story and you give your opinion? Do, do they follow your opinion or...? Um, it, uh, usually I catch things before they actually shoot them. Okay. Uh, once in a while though, at uh, early in the filming, they invited me to go to the set, you know, and to have a small part in the show. Yes. Which is fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. But after that was over, uh, I was sitting outside the set with my husband while they did the oath taking, you know, okay. where Dougal was swearing to Column and so forth. And I was watching on the monitor, and I could see that they had uh, Column holding Dougal's hands, and he picked them up and kissed them. And I said, no, that's not right, it's the other way. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, my husband uh, said, well, you should tell them. And I was saying, well, I'm shy, I don't want to tell them that. And he said, no, you're the consultant, you have to tell them that. So, so I told them, and uh, they ran okay. right in and, and told the actors to do it the other way, and they did. So, so they do listen to you. Oh, yeah, they do. Okay. But, uh, but you know, I'm very diplomatic when I, <laughs> <laughs> when I tell them things like that. Okay. Uh, la question is to know if it happened to see things in the series that didn't come and that didn't come. Et qu'elle dit que généralement elle peut intervenir avant, avant le, le tournage. Mais il arrive comme une scène par exemple où le. Où de, de, euh, la scène du serment à, à Dougal, où elle a remarqué que l'un a embrassé les mains de l'autre et elle trouvait que c'était pas, pas comme ça qu'il fallait le faire. Donc euh, elle a hésité longuement parce qu'elle ne voulait pas intervenir. Finalement son mari l'a convaincu et elle a été leur dire et ils ont changé la scène. Um, you continue to write your series. Yes. Uh, do you see the actors' faces while you're writing now the no. network? <laughs> No, I've been living with these people in my head for 30 years. I, yeah, I'm not going to lose them. <laughs> no, they, I tell people the book is the book and the show is the show. You know, for me, they're separate things, but I enjoy them both very much. Yeah, you know, they overlap. <laughs> La série n'influence pas du tout sa vision des personnages puisqu'elle vit avec depuis 25 ans et qu'elle dit toujours aux gens que la série c'est une chose, mais vivre c'est une autre chose. Uh, you say the name of Jamie is Jamie. Uh, uh, I was uh, inspired by uh, Doctor Who character. Uh -huh. uh, you are fan of Doctor Who? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, uh, always? Uh, for a long new, time, new yeah. Sorry? <laughs> Sorry? For a long time, yes. Jimmy Jack Tuchel. Well, it's still a fan of Doctor Who, oh, yes. even now. Uh, yes. uh -huh. Because it's hard. Uh, it's harder to see. see, yeah. see and, uh, yeah, no, I have to wait for the DVDs. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I do. They're doing reruns on uh, French TV right now. Are they really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I have a question about yeah. the books. Uh, Everybody is going very uh, in in a. Um, Frothing at the mouth about all the rapes in the series, but I noticed there is uh, all the changelings, and nobody s seems to pick pick that up. I mean, so many children mm -hmm. are not their parents' children yeah. or <laughs> are foster children. All I mean, there is Fergus, Brianna, mm -hmm. uh, Claire, yeah. Roger, yeah. Uh, Willie, yeah, orphans. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of orphans. Uh, and Gilles, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you know. There are a lot of patterns in the books. They're very big books, they're very complex. And uh, I've written them in layers, so that often people read the top layer, which is you know the excitement and the adventure and this, and they don't see some of the deeper things. They go back later and read them again, and then they begin to see the deeper things. Okay, um, about the rapes and so forth, this is just political correctness, you know, it is just this particular point in time, people are proposed to go, oh, <laughs> about things like that, you know, uh, they've been there for the last 25 years, no one has noticed until just now, mm -hmm. and now only because it is politically correct to be offended, and you know, I don't care if I offend people. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, that is one of the patterns that they're... What we're doing with that is is not to be gratuitous, to shock the audience, to you know, titillate them. They're there because um, it's uh, the books are very much about sex, amongst other things, and the connections between people. Well, this is a variation of sex, which is about disconnection between people, and therefore it's an important thing to to notice in this continuum of you know sexual contact that you have. People only see the top, you know, and, and this, um, it, but it is a continuum and because of this, uh, this physical intimacy that it involves. And uh, so, you know, it, I don't make a point of it because 
to me, a book that has a political agenda is always a bad book. I've read many of them. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, I, I would never do that. But in passing, one thing that you see in today's modern world is because people have suddenly decided to be excited about rape in a you know, totally moral way, uh, they regard it as a single thing. You know, rape is always a crime of anger, always, rape is always this, you know, people who have suffered rape are victims, you know, or they're survivors or so forth. But they don't ever look at a single incidence, you know, what happens between, you know, two people and they have this violent encounter. It is a very singular thing, just the same way that the sexual encounters between people who love each other are single. I tell people that a good sex scene is one that could only have happened to these two people, not to any two people, but only to these two people. And that's why you know, the sex scenes in my books are engaging and interesting and so forth. The same way, uh, a rape happens only between two individuals. And if you look at those occurrences in my books, and they're not all over the place, you know, <laughs> there are maybe one in every other book, but, yeah, and compared to all the other things that are happening, very small. But, uh, you know, what happened to Brianna is quite different from what happened to Claire when she was kidnapped and so forth. And uh, both those things were very different from what happened to Jamie and with Black Jack Randall and so forth. And it is what happens in each of those instances, but much more important what happens after that? How does the person who was attacked deal with this? Mm. And that has a great deal to do with uh, their psychology and, and the nature of the encounter and so forth. And you know what help they have at hand and so forth. Now, I have never, ever had a letter from someone who had been raped, who said, this is terrible, you shouldn't write about this, it gives me bad memories, I have dreams, you, know, you, should, you should not do this. Never, that's never happened. But I have had a lot of letters from people who have suffered rape, and what they all say to me, uh, sometimes they say this was this was hard to read, but it was very cathartic, you know, very healing mm -hmm. to me, both because you treat it so honestly, you know, you this is this is what happened, and it allowed me, you know, to to be in possession of myself again. It uh, also showed me that it was possible to heal because these people did, and so now I know I can do so, or I have done so as a result of reading your books. So this happens a lot, and I think these people are the only ones who are entitled to have an opinion about it. And about the changelings, all about the Oh, the changelings, <laughs> yeah. Well, that is another pattern, you know. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <rire> la question c'est de, de savoir les, 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 les thèmes récurrents enfin, des, qui surviennent comme le viol ou les enfants, euh, les enfants échangés, les orphelins, les enfants qui sont élevés par d'autres. Euh, et Diana a expliqué qu'en fait, il y a, elle écrit, euh, il y a plusieurs niveaux dans chaque livre. Il y a le premier niveau qu'on voit qui est l'aventure, etc. Et qu'après, à la relecture, on peut percevoir d'autres des, des thèmes qui permettent de parler de, la, de notre monde aussi bien actuel que dans le 19e, euh, 18e. Pardon. Et elle dit que s'il y a des viols, bien sûr, aujourd'hui, on a une vision du viol qui est très euh, politiquement correcte, tandis que ça a toujours existé. Je sais de me souvenir de tout ce qu'elle a dit, mais, et qu'elle a très rarement eu de, 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 de courrier, de, de, enfin, elle n'a jamais eu de courrier de personnes en disant vous ne pouvez pas écrire, j'ai été violée, vous ne pouvez pas écrire ce genre de choses, mais plutôt des de, 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 de lettres de, de femmes qui ont été, qui ont subi un viol, qui lui disent que même si c'est difficile à lire, c'est écrit tellement sincèrement que ça fait du bien, ça leur permet aussi d'expurger de, de, quelque chose. Et il y avait aussi le fait qu'une bonne scène de sexe, c'est une scène qui ne peut oui. advenir <rire> qu'entre ces deux personnages-là. Pour écrire une bonne cette, euh, scène de sexe, il faut que ce soit euh, une, euh, une relation sexuelle qui puisse survenir qu'entre ces deux personnages, à un moment donné. Tout comme une, dans un viol, le viol intervient parce que c'est cette personne et cette personne-là, et ce qui se passe euh, dépend de la personnalité de chacun. On a fait la façon de se relever du viol également. Exactement. Merci. <rire> Et justement, par rapport à toutes ces scènes assez violentes, euh, est-ce qu'il y en a une qui vous a marqué plus qu'une autre durant toute la série, justement Parce qu'il y a beaucoup de violence dans cette série. Il y a une scène en particulier qui était plus difficile à écrire. Il y a beaucoup plus difficile à écrire que les autres. C'est cool. It is not really difficult to write the violent scenes. The emotional scenes are very difficult emotionally because you live through them. Uh, but with both emotion and violence, uh, 
this is a principle that's true of all art. You get much more effect from restraint than you do if you are excited yourself. Um, my husband calls it laughing at your own jokes. You know, if you are making a big fuss about, you know, how, how terrible this is, or this is so, so violent, or so awful, I can't stand this sort of thing. And you don't do that. You, you stand back a little and you tell it very clearly and as simply as you can and this will have a much bigger impact on the people who read it than if you were you know, going all over the place. Et en fait, c'est pas très, c'est pas euh, tellement difficile d'écrire des, des, des scènes de violence. C'est plutôt les scènes émotionnelles parce que forcément, en les écrivant, on les vit. Et que une manière, c'est justement de prendre du recul et de dire exactement ce qu'on ressent quand on écrit le, la scène. Changeless? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, they are another of the patterns that recurs. Part of the reason for having so many, you know, dispossessed orphans, uh, changelings, and so forth, is that uh, the books are already very complex. To have people who had l attachments, who had a lot of family backstory, this would be difficult because you would have to deal with that backstory uh, in order to make them completely well-rounded people. For instance, Jamie would not be who he is without his parents and Murtaugh and his sister and his nieces and nephews. He has a whole constellation of people around him. And I could do that for him. To do that for all of the people, we would have a huge mess. And so by making the people be orphans, this simplifies things. But beyond that, the deeper intent here is to show the nature of connections, that they are not only of flesh and blood, but you know, of the spirit and of love. Sur la question des, des enfants, et pour, pour, il y a beaucoup de, beaucoup de personnages ont été soit échangés dans leur euh, enfance, où ils sont orphelins, où ils ont été élevés par d'autres. Et elle dit que euh, dans, dans les personnages, par exemple, elle, avec euh, Jamie, il a un, un passé qui, qui était très développé. On connaît l'histoire de sa mère, son histoire avec Montag, etc. Ça lui permet d'avoir un personnage très très développé. Elle ne veut pas faire ça avec tous les personnages parce qu'ils sont très nombreux. Donc le fait qu'ils soient orphelins, ça aide un petit peu. Ça facilite un peu parce qu'on n'a pas de background à faire. C'est une hypothèse, mais pensez-vous que les livres de John Gray seraient des séries de série ou inclus dans le script des prochaines saisons de Outlander Je ne sais pas. Peut-être quand nous arrivons à Voyager. Uh, he is not really present in the series as an adult until that point. Mm -hmm. He will be in Dragonfly and Amber, but you know, as we see him there as a 16-year-old boy, and you know, without his, his additional stories. I don't know. Uh, technically, the, the film people do not own those books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they own the, uh, the main series. And so they would have to make a, another arrangement with my agents in order to use that material. But, uh, but I do occasionally you know, show them something. When I'm talking to the production people about the scripts and the outlines, and sometimes they will talk to me before they write something and say, well, you know, what was going on here uh, that maybe was not in the book? And uh, I had a long lunch with, uh, with Ron about what Gilas Duncan was doing after she escaped from the witch trial. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, we think she's dead in mm -hmm. Dragonfly and Amber, but she's not, so what was she doing? Well, I knew that, and so I told him. And, you know, he may use some of what I told him in the second season. He may not, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But he has that information. But that's never been written down, so it wasn't an issue for me to, to tell him that. Yeah, that's when she is in France, right? Yes. When uh -huh. she's in yeah. Maison and Paris? Maison, well, Maison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the other thing, there's a, a, a short story called Virgins, which is from a book called Dangerous Women, which I think you will shortly get. <laughs> you know, oh, really? Yeah, in case, yeah. Yeah, the publisher was just telling me about it today and how she's decided to mm. publish it in two volumes, one with the male authors and one with the female authors, because it's too big to do as one book. So, yeah. Okay. But um, anyway, that, that book is about Jamie and his best friend Ian being young mercenaries mm. in France and it happens before Outlander. Well, I gave that story to the production people as well, uh, in case they might use it. And they did use material from it in one of the later episodes, in episode 13, I think it is. So if you've read that story by then, you will, you will see the, the small bits that they used there. And in fact, they used them very cleverly. And we did not make a special arrangement about that, because I didn't tell my agents. I just <laughs> 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 could, could they do about <laughs> 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 
la question était de savoir si les, le perso les, les, les aventures de John Gray vont, vont être mêlées à la série. Et Diana a répondu que pour le premier, dans le premier tome, ça ne se pose pas vraiment, puisqu'il n'a pas vraiment un personnage, c'est juste un gamin de 16 ans. Mais il arrive, par exemple, que pour, euh, pour des raisons de logique, les, les, ceux qui créent la série aient besoin de renseignements qui ne sont pas dans le livre. Comme par exemple ce qui se passe à Gaelis, euh, quand, euh, après, entre le, la, le moment où Gaelis a échappé au bûcher des sorcières, et euh, avant qu'on la retrouve aux Antilles, il y a, elle a une vie. Or, ce n'est pas dans le livre, mais bien ainsi, ce qui lui est arrivé. Donc, elle leur explique pour qu'ils puissent, euh, à eux aussi, euh, donner de, de la substance au personnage. Et il y a un autre, une autre nouvelle qu'elle a écrite, qui sera peut-être publiée euh, en France, et qui ce sont les aventures de Jamie et de Yann avant Outlander. Et par exemple, pour que le, le, le réalisateur puisse en, en, en tenir compte dans, dans la création du personnage de Jamie, euh, elle leur a donné cette nouvelle et ils ont, ils ont utilisé des, des, des passages, des, des idées de cette nouvelle pour l'intégrer dans leur série. Okay. Yes, I must uh, tell you something which just occurred to me before I forget again. Yesterday, I had an email from a nice gentleman named Guillaume Lacomte, who is the, uh, the new French tutor for the show. And he said that he, uh, Sam Hewitt had given him my address. He said he would like to know what was the background of the various characters with France and French speaking, so that he could uh, appropriately design them dialects and accents to be appropriate to who they are. Because Claire, of course, is speaking French from the 1940s and from the north of France, which is where she was, you know, in Normandy and up mm -hmm. toward the, the border with Belgium. Mm -hmm. She would not ever have been in the south, so okay. she would not have language from that. But also, she traveled in the Middle East with her uncle. And so she would have been picking up the sort of, of French they speak in Algeria and Egypt and so forth. You know, very low class French for the most part, but also academic French because her uncle was an archaeologist. And at that time, many of the papers were written in French and that would be very educated. So he said, have a lot of fun with her. But, <laughs> but I told him about Jamie, you know, and being a mercenary, but also that he was at the Université for two years before that and would therefore have access to very educated French as well as, as soldiers French. So we'll see what he does with that. It's going to be very complicated. <laughs> Is it Tudor for, for the for the, the actors? show? Yeah, yeah. Is the he has received an email from the French who will take care of the the part of the French the aspect French in the series? In asking him if he could clarify what was the relationship of each character with France. For example, we know that Jamie has been to the university and that he has been a uh, mercenary in France. Uh, Claire, uh, during the war, she was a mercenary in France. Claire, during the war, she was a mercenary in France. Claire, during the war, she was a mercenary in France. Claire, during the war, she was a mercenary in France. Euh, avec son oncle archéologue, ils ont été beaucoup en Afrique du Nord, où elle a ramassé d'autres, elle a dû capter des expressions. Et donc ça, ça participe à la, à la création des personnages. Is there any chance <laughs> that they might shoot part of the second uh, season in Paris? Like or even one episode? Or in France. Or in France. Or in France. Yeah. I, I really don't know. Uh, they have designed most of the sets, you know, the interiors, to be done in, in Cumbernauld at their at their studio because, you know, a set is a set, you can mm. design anything. But for the exterior shots, I don't know. They might do a little location work here, but they haven't told me if so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a spare room, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if needed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Uh, lots of volunteers for uh, tutoring if they need. Okay. Especially <laughs> Sam. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very good learner. <laughs> and do you know when will uh, the season two start to film? I do, yeah. I'm not sure I'm allowed to tell you, but it's in May. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some say it's in an interview yesterday, so it's yeah. May. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. It's it's sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I know what the date is, but I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> okay. I don't know why not, but okay. they tend to be very secretive so about these things. Okay. Yes. Would you say that your focus is less on writing now than it was before the TV series started? My husband says that. <laughs> he says you have to stop doing all these things, you know, so you can get another book written. Uh, it's not that my focus is less, because I'm still concentrated very firmly on, um, on the writing and what I do, and I, I write every day. I work in the middle of the night, you know, so it is not really a distraction what I do during the day, but uh, all of the travel and the appearances and things like that take a lot of time. And so I'm, I'm, I'm very 
choosy about which ones I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so do you write in the middle of the night at the hotel uh, mm -hmm. when you're traveling for, yeah. mm -hmm. for TV? Yeah, sometimes less than I would at home because I have to get up in the morning and sometimes <laughs> get up early. So I may work only an hour or two instead of four hours, which is my usual. But, uh, but I do work every day. You know, it's important to keep words going. <laughs> when when you work do you, do you have in mind already what you're going to do you have something that you have to write down or do you just sit at your desk and say okay i have to write on the book so i need to some of both okay yeah. uh, i don't usually finish a scene in one uh, one session mm. i will start something and it may be just a few scattered paragraphs to begin with but that will stay with me through the next day and and it develops and begins to have little tendrils and i will hear lines that people say and i'll have that in mind when i sit down again to work at night and so i put that in and then i go back and forth and back and forth and just reading it over again stimulates other questions i read in the back of my mind is saying what time of day is it how is the light falling you know who else is in the room and that's where uh, mm. how, it, how it starts once um, you start it it goes and you know the word yeah? Non. Il y a question de savoir si ça ne l'avait pas déconcentré par rapport à son travail d'écriture. Il dit que non, parce que son travail la nuit et euh, tous les jours. Normalement, c'est 4 heures quand elle est en, en voyage, etc. C'est un petit peu moins. Et qu'elle écrit par fragments. C'est-à-dire qu'elle n'écrit pas une scène d'un coup. Elle va mettre des, quelques paragraphes et puis petit à petit, ça va lui rester pendant la journée. Et elle va ajouter, en fonction des questions, rajouter un personnage, rajouter la lumière, rajouter le, le contexte. C'est comme ça qu'elle travaille. Mais elle continue d'écrire régulièrement. Euh, quand on a lu le livre il y a 20 ans, euh, c'est vrai que dans le premier livre, la scène du viol de Jimmy, ça avait été quand même un choc. C'était assez inhabituel. Et euh, on a dit qu'elle a osé. Et est-ce que justement cette scène euh, du viol de Jimmy dans la, dans la série, c'est une scène qui est attendue par rapport aux, aux possibles réactions de. Like 20 years ago, when you wrote the, uh, the first volume, the, uh, the finale with uh, James Ray was like a shock, so, so she had to write less. And she wanted to know if the scene in the series is something that they are afraid of or not, or they're expecting some reaction. They'll be very disappointed if they don't get a reaction. <laughs> no, so they won't get a reaction, actually. Probably, so. Yeah. Um, Uh, what Ron says about it, he's very calm. He just says, if it's in the book, we'll film it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did. They did a, a very wonderful job with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yes, there will certainly be a reaction, <laughs> one way or another. <laughs> But uh, you know, it, uh, it took a lot of nerve for them to do that. <laughs> do you think your books are, um, can be classified as romance, historical, science fiction, or all of this? Oh, all of that, yes. and a lot more too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so far, I've seen my books sold as literature, fiction, historical fiction, uh, science fiction, fantasy, mystery, romance, military history. <laughs> Gay and lesbian fiction and horror. No, this is true. I won a, <laughs> won a cool award, uh, rather prestigious, uh, in the science fiction, fantasy, and horror category, for which I beat both George R. R. Martin and Stephen King. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get that, or shall we say so? No, because in fact, I asked her in category she was situated in her books. She said that she had already had her books in the category sentimental, military history, gay and lesbian, science fiction, fantasy, military history, thriller, il a même gagné un prix pour le pour le où elle a battu Stephen King et euh, un autre. I have another question. Um, in around September or, or October last year, you did say that France had. A, 
one uh, TV channel had uh, signed a contract with Sony. Well, that was my understanding, yeah. Okay. But uh, uh, can you confirm that or? No, I don't. I mean, I can't because uh, they don't consult me on business yeah, decisions like yeah. that. It lies with the Sony uh, uh, people. Mm -hmm. Now, what someone had told me more recently was that there are two channels that want the show, and they are sort of bidding against each other. Uh -huh. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know that. So. I don't know that for a fact. It okay. was just gossip, okay. but uh, but it may be the case, and I don't know which one will win. <laughs> it's true. Okay. But uh, but they did say that they that they had a deal in France. Okay. They may just have meant that that meant they had someone who had said yes, I want it. Okay. Okay. Sure. Can I please Do you have questions? You can ask in French. Okay. Oui, en fait, nous, je. Basically, I'm from New York City. I'm a oh, transplant. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm in Oxford and Delphi. Oh, yeah. Um, so yes, thank you very much for the nice gift. <laughs> <laughs> okay, glad you liked it. Um, I would like to know, uh, I know I've been a long time fan. Um, you say that your character development, sometimes you've got like tough nuts and sometimes you've got mushrooms. Yeah. But I'd like to know a little bit more about the alchemy of how you put characters together. And the biggest question is, do you, like Claire and Jamie have like a fatal flaw? Do you insert that kind of quality in your character? <laughs> No, they just seem to have flaws as they come. You know, I don't invent them. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, I don't design characters. I think some writers do. Uh, they have wall charts about what kind of peanut butter and what kind of shoe size their characters have and uh, things like that. But I don't. I just uh, the characters kind of either they come along for me or I can tell they're there and I have to think about them for a long time. But then they they come forward. But you know, they they come with what they have. I don't give them anything. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Mais, que elle ne crée pas ses personnages avec selon un concept où tout est prévu, tout est prévu à l'avance avec euh, un tableau, avec tous les, les goûts, les dégoûts, etc. Elle les laisse venir petit à petit et euh, avec leurs défauts et leurs euh, leur qualités et après la chimie se fait directement euh, sur la page. Okay. 